Yeah, um, I, I can't think of a more difficult game maybe to run into than this one at the end of a, a difficult week. Um, those three games this time of year can be uh, hugely challenging. However, I, I thought for, for good periods of the game, um, the teams were, were evenly matched. I didn't think there were too many chances either way, clear-cut chances. But when you look back at the defining moments in the game and the important um, situations in the end of of uh, have separated the teams. They executed in a in a far more clinical fashion, and you know we were unable on a couple of occasions to claw our way back into the game. And you know sometimes fatigue's not about just legs; it's about minds as well. And I thought there were a couple of moments that we just lost our way in in tight situations, um, and maybe squandered the ball a little bit more readily than we did on Wednesday when we looked a little bit fresher. Um, Gary, you told us last game, uh, because of the, this type of games that, we, that, that you guys are facing, that any time the team has opportunities against good sides, you better capitalise or, yeah. or else. Uh, do you think CJ's opportunity and, also, and then Max would have made a big difference in the, in the outcome? I, I think so. Um, I mean, really, when you look at the stats... Very, very evenly matched, certainly in opportunities, um, efforts at goal. But I think more importantly, clear-cut moments. You know, when you're playing against good sides, uh, you've got to try and limit the clarity of their chances. Um, and whilst also doing your very utmost to try and prize those opportunities open for yourself. And to your point, you're not going to get loads against the really top sides. And I think in the last two games, um, I think we can safely say that for one reason or another, Seattle being, you know, obviously one of, if not the best MLS sides in the last five or six years. And I think we're looking at an LAFC team that are not only on a very confident and positive run, they're in a terrific league position, they've added high-caliber players to an already high-caliber group. And, you know, I'm, I'm delighted with the way the guys have gone about their business third game in a week. But to your point again, when you're not going to see many moments, you've got to take advantage of them. Steve. Hey, Coach. Um, can you talk to me about the conversations you, you and your staff and the team had at halftime and how that game plan changed after the opening goal in the second half? Well, my first question to the group was, do you feel that you've got back into the game that you can actually win this? Because I was a, a tad concerned um, the way that the guys came in at the break that, um, you know, there might just be a little doubt in their mind. I wanted to remind them how the first period had gone, um, some of the, the positives that we'd um, taken out of the game that first period. You know, the penalty is an absolute clear-cut penalty. There's no... You know, there's no denying that. And in fairness, you know, LA had had few sights of goal, good sights of goal. It's some nice possession and showed some nice quality, but that doesn't convert to, uh, to, to goals unless you get yourself into that, that final third and that penalty box area with a little bit more, um, you know, creativity. And, and they've just not been able to do that. So we were well in the game. Again, you know, against a very, very good side to concede that quickly. Um, you know, maybe getting the legs going again, being bright and seeing pictures clearly as soon as you come out of the locker room. A lesson to be learned. Absolutely lesson to be learned for, for, for our group, for all the players, that you get yourself back into a good game, a really tight game, a very important game. And now, you, now you're trying to swim up tight again. You know, teams like this are not going to offer up big moments and you've just put, dug yourselves a little bit of a hole. So, again, great credit in the way that the guys went about their business. Both sides of the ball, I thought we, we tried to push. We tried to, um, you know, keep things as tight as possible without opening up the game too much. And slowly but surely... 
Um, I thought we showed one or two encouraging signs. We didn't outplay them, but I thought we did enough to get ourselves back into the game. Um, and, and probably the biggest moment um, that I know if he could have back again, he, he would he would love to, and that was the one that dropped to Dax. Um, but look, it wasn't to be. There's nothing wrong with Dave. Um, Dave's, Dave's in great shape. I stuck with the, the group that had performed so well on Wednesday night. Um, no, Dave's still in, in good shape and competing for the group or to be in the group. Um, Annabelle has, has started to do some more um, uh, fulfilling work, if you like, out on the training field. Uh, will he be available for the weekend? I'd like to think so. It'll be tight, but I don't think it'll be too far away given the work that he's already achieved. Tim Sullivan with the next question via the song. Gary, you guys, uh, you guys had a number of, of good-looking chances, but the only goal comes via penalty. What do you need to do to, uh, I guess, convert more? Is it is it a matter of creating more chances? Is it a matter of that clinical edge in front of the goal? What is... What is it going to take to, to be more productive from one of the play? Well, we've only got to go back a couple of games, Tim, and uh, we take a, a, a comprehensive 2 0 lead against, again, a, uh, you know, a post season challenging team and an exceptionally good team, I might add, in Portland. Um, you know, we're creating moments, we're creating opportunities. The last two home games, you know, I, I defy many groups to be creating chance after chance against the likes of Seattle and LAFC and the top, top teams. So you have to be more clinical. Um, you've got to take advantage of those moments when they come along. And, and in all honesty, you know, it's always a better position to be in front and, and to be leading from the front rather than trying to recover against these groups. And today that... It certainly wasn't the picture we, we created. Gary, um, it doesn't seem like, like Nashville was uh, less than them in terms of uh, tactically, but it does seem, though, that uh, sometimes the amount of players they have uh, technically are, are very well mannered uh, made a big difference. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, you, if, you, if you look at their group, um, uh, and it's not, I don't think it's just about the calibre of the individuals that that they have in their group and have constructed over a period of time. It is that fact that they've been in the league a tad longer than us. Um, Steve's done a magnificent job, um, I'm sure, with, with John Thorrington and pulling this group together and adding the players that they've just added. And, and let's, you know, seriously not, you know, beat around the bush here. When you add the likes of Cellini and, and Bale to the group, an already good group, you know, you're, you're squeezing a little bit more out of those quality players. They they know that there's competition and world-class competition coming into the group. Um, we've only seen um, Gareth Bow in a, you know, a, a small sample size, but, you know, you can see firsthand the, the, the high level of player that he is and everyone knows. And, and same goes for, you know, probably one of the best European defenders in... You know, in the you know the the modern generation, he's been absolutely magnificent defender, and to add those type of players is such a big lift for everyone else. So, we've played against the top top side tonight. You know, uh, whoever's challenging them, and we obviously hope we can get on a run and do that. Um, we've made that a lot tougher for ourselves tonight, but I think anyone that finishes above LFC, so you've probably got a good chance of winning the Shield and certainly the Western Conference. What are some of the issues that you guys feel like you need to hatch out the most? And what are some of the positives that the teams have right now that you want to continue to emphasize as the second half of the season? Well, I'd like to think that everyone's seen a slight transition in the way that we're going about our business the last three games here. Um, in that, I mean, 
you know, going to a back four, trying to get some more aggressive players on the field. And that in itself will take a little bit of time to bed in. But in that period of time, we draw against, um, you know, a very good Portland side. We beat a very good Seattle team. And we've obviously fallen short today um, against a top, top LAFC team. But the signs are good. Um, we've lost none of the um, the guile and the, the the competitive nature of of the team and what we've I think represented in um, you know our first two seasons. But I think we now start to see a little bit of pressure higher up the field. Um, certainly, uh, a, a better opportunity to bring. Uh, creative players into the game and to ask a little bit more out of our wide areas which I think have have always been a little bit of a focal point for our group um, some good patience today um, I think uh, a pretty good mindset from the group given the circumstances um, the disappointment will be the way the goals have come about in terms of the future we're always looking to, to try and improve the group, whether that's on the training field, um, additions to the group, um, or, or even a slightly different look. But over this second um, half of the season and going into what we would be not far away from, which is the final third of the season, I think we've got a lot of nice pieces of this puzzle. And, and tonight will be disappointing, but... I think when we look back on this, we'll be more disappointed about the fact we haven't got anything out of it than we were completely outplayed by a top, top side. Coach, you've mentioned in the past that the defence sometimes gives uh, too many gifts uh, for the goals. Would you describe the second goal tonight um, as something like that? that yeah, I, I don't think it comes into the gift category. Um, I think there's one or two other goals that you, you might be able to give as examples as gifts. You know, they've worked for that goal. Um, are there things we could have and should have done in those early exchanges that, that may well have prevented that opportunity? For sure. Um, I'm certainly not going to go into that or, or point fingers at anyone. It's always a collective um, look at what we can all do better and how we can improve and how we can you know, put ourselves in the very best situation, not only to, to be in the postseason, which is you know, really where everyone's fighting to be, but to also be there in good shape, in a good mindset, confident, um, and of course, in the best possible position to then challenge for silverware, which is, you know, really where we all want to be. So uh, lots, lots and lots of good things still, you know, far more positives than negatives. Um, but yeah, some disappointment that, the early goal in the second half has now proven to be the winning goal, you know.